In this story, we dare to traverse the ancient landscapes, veiled by the mists of time, to shed light on a figure cloaked in a myriad of stories and interpretations. This is a tale of a woman who refused to bow down, who dared to defy the ordained. This is the tale of Lilith. For some of you, the name Lilith might be familiar, a phantom of forgotten lore. Yet, for others, she may be a stranger. She's been depicted as a demoness, a rebellious wife, an object of dread, and even a symbol of resolute independence. Her narrative is as diverse as it is captivating, ensnaring the human psyche across the ages. Lilith's enigmatic shadow stretches from the cradle of civilization in ancient Sumeria to the winding streets of medieval Europe, seeping into the neon-lit landscape of contemporary pop culture. This spectral figure teeters on the boundary of darkness and light, fear and respect, enslavement and emancipation. Who was Lilith? An enemy or an ally? A destroyer or a liberator? Stay with us, and together we'll unveil the face behind the mask, the woman behind the demoness, and maybe, just maybe, we'll realize that the wilderness we fear to tread is not so different from our own. In the beginning, there was the Garden of Eden, a lush paradise crafted by the divine hand, a sanctuary of perfect harmony and boundless beauty. And within this sanctuary, there were two beings, fashioned from the earth itself. Adam, the first man, and Eve, made from Adam's rib, the companion created to accompany him in this blissful world. As they walked side by side in the soft verdant grass beneath the canopy of blooming trees, they existed in a state of innocence, unaware of good and evil. Their lives a symphony of simple pleasures and divine companionship. This is the Eden we have all come to know, a place of purity, of unity, an emblem of tranquility before the proverbial fall. But let us step away from this well-trodden path, into the shadows of forgotten lore. Here lies a different narrative, a narrative of conflict, of rebellion, and of a figure seldom spoken of. This narrative whispers the name of Lilith. Before Eve, so the tale tells us, there was another, Lilith, created not from Adam's rib, but from the same earth that brought forth Adam. Equal in her creation, she was intended to be a partner in every sense but this equality did not sit well with Adam, and from his discord, a new story was birthed. This narrative takes us to the heart of Eden, not as we know it, but as it might have been. An Eden not only of unity and tranquility, but also of tension and discord, where the seeds of rebellion were sown not by the serpent's temptation, but by the struggle for equality. Lilith, with her heart aflame with the fire of self-determination, found herself standing at the precipice of a daunting decision. Would she submit, succumb to Adam's will for a life of harmony in Eden? Or would she rebel, asserting her equal birthright but risking everything she'd known? Adam's call echoed through the tranquil garden. A plea for submission for conformity to his ideal partnership. Yet, within Lilith stirred a storm, a turbulent clash of desire for peace and a fervour for equality. She found herself torn, her heart a battleground of longing and defiance. She knew the price of her rebellion, the paradise of Eden, with its flowering meadows and crystal-clear waters, could be forever lost to her, a land of wilderness and darkness might become her new dwelling, a 
far cry from the divine sanctuary she was accustomed to. More daunting still was the fear of what she would become. A mother of demons, a feared entity of the night. The words hung heavy in the air. A prophecy, or perhaps a curse, painting a ghastly picture of an unimaginable future. It was a path that held uncertainty, hardship, even horror. Yet, amidst the fear and trepidation, Lilith beheld the price of her refusal, the loss of her own identity, her autonomy. And as the echoes of Adam's call resounded through Eden, she found her resolve hardening. The cost of her rebellion was steep, but perhaps the price of submission was even steeper. For what was Eden's beauty if marred by the chains of subjugation? What was the price of peace if purchased with the currency of her freedom? Once cast out from the realm of Eden, the refuge of resplendent flowers, and the companionship of innocuous beasts, Lilith found herself alone in the wilderness, engulfed by the untamed lands that lay beyond the garden's boundaries. It was a realm of shadows and strange creatures, a stark contrast to the paradise she had once known. It was here that she encountered the figure of the archangel Samuel. Samuel, the mighty archangel, a figure of power and divine wisdom, found Lilith in her solitude. Known for his strength, and sometimes seen as a figure of ambiguity, he radiated an otherworldly aura, both daunting and compelling. His eyes, a mirror of the cosmos, held a thousand secrets and a profound understanding of the divine. Samuel was intrigued by Lilith, the woman who dared to challenge the ordained order, who exchanged paradise for the uncharted wilderness, all in the name of equality. He saw in her not a mere rebel, but a beacon of independence, a symbol of defiance. In their meetings beneath the celestial dome, amidst the whispering winds and the silent lands, Samuel became a mentor to Lilith. He did not try to change her, to tame her fiery spirit. Instead, he guided her, providing her with the knowledge and wisdom to navigate her new surroundings, to understand and harness her newfound powers. In the boundless wilderness, amidst uncertainty and danger, Lilith found in Samuel a companion, an ally, and a mentor. His presence in her life became a beacon of hope and guidance, lighting her path in a world that was trying to submerge her in darkness. Through their bond, Lilith began to understand her new world and herself, her role beyond Eden's gates, and the full potential of her defiant spirit. With a final glance at the paradise she was leaving behind, Lilith took the fateful step. The flora of Eden gave away to a wild, untamed landscape, far removed from the order and harmony of the garden. The sweet scent of blooming flowers was replaced by the raw, earthy smell of the wilderness. The gentle, melodious call of the birds of paradise was swallowed by the howls and growls of unseen creatures lurking in the dark. As she ventured deeper into the wilderness, the bright sky of Eden darkened, the path before her shrouded in an almost palpable veil of uncertainty. The surroundings were eerie, yet the wilderness was captivating in its raw beauty and primal power. Every rustle in the underbush, every shadow that danced in her peripheral vision, sent a jolt of fear through her. Yet, there was also a sense of liberation coursing through her veins a fierce thrill that came with facing the unknown. The wilderness was harsh and unforgiving, a frightening world that was now her reality. But it was also a place of endless possibilities. She was no longer the Lilith of Eden, 
bound by Adam's will and God's command. She was Lilith, the independent, the rebel. And as she ventured further into the wilderness, she embraced the uncertainty and fear, for she understood that this was her first test in the new world, her first step in the journey that lay ahead. The wilderness was a realm of trials and tribulations for Lilith. She faced challenges far beyond the physical realm, tests of her will, her spirit, her very being. From each battle she emerged, not unscathed, but undeterred. One of the gravest trials she bore was the curse of birthing and killing her own offspring, an unending cycle of creation and destruction. Her children, demon spawn, were set to fill the night with terror, only to be slain by their own mother come morning. It was a horrific ordeal, a torment that gnawed at her heart, yet a curse she bore with unyielding resilience. Lilith was also vilified by humanity. From the lips of scribes and the quills of scholars, tales of her wickedness spread. She was painted as a demon, a malevolent creature of the night. Her story was told in hushed whispers, an ominous warning to those who dared to challenge the ordained order. Yet, amidst these trials, Lilith was not alone. Her ally, Samuel, stood by her side, a companion amidst the chaos. His guidance was a beacon, illuminating the path through her darkest nights. The bond they shared grew stronger with each passing moment, a testament to their shared resilience in the face of adversities. But for every ally there were enemies, angels from the celestial realm loyal to the divine order viewed Lilith's rebellion with scorn. They sought to quell her defiance, to bring her back to Eden, to restore the order she had disrupted. Yet, Lilith stood her ground, facing her foes with a courage of born conviction. In the heart of the wilderness, under the watchful gaze of a billion stars, Lilith endured. Each test hardened her resolve. Every adversary fueled her determination, and each ally strengthened her spirit. Through it all, she stood tall, a lone figure defying the heavens, asserting her place in the cosmic dance of creation and destruction. The wilderness that was once an alien landscape began to transform in the wake of Lilith's enduring spirit. As time wore on, the unfamiliar gradually became familiar, the frightening gradually less daunting. The land that was once a harsh test of survival slowly morphed into a realm of untapped potential, a world that danced to the tune of Lilith's will. From the parched deserts to the shadowy forest, from the deepest gorges to the highest peaks, she explored, adapted, and conquered. She learned the secret tongues of the wilderness, the unspoken code of survival, of power. She bent the primal forces to her will, shaping the chaos into a semblance of her own order. Her power grew, stemming not only from the knowledge and strength she gained from her mentor Samel, but also from her unyielding spirit. Her essence seeped into the wilderness imprinting her mark upon the untamed land. Her presence was felt in the whispering winds, in the rustling leaves, in the silent stillness of the night. She was no longer merely a denizen of the wilderness. She was becoming its reigning sovereign. Tales of her powers began to circulate, whispers of her dominion carried by the wind. Humanity looked upon the wilderness with a newfound fear. A fear of a woman who had become one with the untamed land. The woman who was feared more than the wild beasts. More than the harshest elements. Lilith, who once walked beside Adam in Eden, now stood alone in her home, the heart of the wilderness.
One particular tale stands out in Lilith's journey, a confrontation that brought her face to face not only with an adversary, but also with her past. In the midst of her newfound power and dominance, she was confronted by a figure from her past life, Adam. The first man, having heard tales of his erstwhile companion's transformation, ventured into the wilderness. Perhaps it was a desire for closure. Perhaps it was a bid to restore the past. Or perhaps curiosity. Whatever it was, it led Adam to the heart of Lilith's realm. As the silhouette of Adam emerged from the shadows, Lilith found herself staring into the eyes of her past. Here was the man whose desire for dominion had sparked her rebellion. The man who symbolised the life she had forsaken. It was a harsh reminder, a ghost from her past now standing before her in flesh and bone. Simultaneously, from the celestial realm, an angel descended with the intent to disrupt Lilith's reign. His arrival was heralded by a blinding light, a stark contrast against the sombre wilderness. As his figure took shape, it became clear a battle was imminent. Yet, this was not merely a physical battle, but a war of ideologies, a struggle between the past and the present between subjugation and independence. Lilith stood her ground as the angel bore down upon her, his celestial aura in stark contrast to the untamed rawness of her wilderness. The confrontation that ensued was fierce and tumultuous. The tranquil wilderness was lit up with divine radiance, clashing against the primal energy of Lilith. This was her ordeal a test of her resilience, her power, her resolve. Against Adam, the symbol of her past, and the angel, the embodiment of the celestial order, Lilith asserted her place, her power, her existence. This was not merely a battle. It was a confirmation of her transformation, a testament to her journey. For Lilith, this was the ordeal that marked a turning point, a challenge that reaffirmed her as a dominant force in the wilderness, a feared figure, a symbol of defiance. In the wake of her confrontation with Adam and the angel, Lilith emerged not as a mere survivor, but as a victor. Her trials, her ordeal, had etched an indelible mark on her spirit shaping her into a figure of formidable power and influence. Her reward was not a material treasure, nor divine blessing, but something more profound, an unshakable sense of self. The wilderness, once a symbol of her banishment, now stood as a testament to her strength and independence. She was not only its denizen, she was its queen, its guiding force. Each rustling leaf, each whispering wind bore her essence, a sign of her dominion over the realm. She wielded the primal forces of the wilderness, not with the intent of conquest, but as an extension of her will, a manifestation of her spirit. Her powers, once nascent, were now fully realised, coursing through her veins with untamed potency. But more than power, her trials had bestowed upon her a sense of self-identity. She was no longer Adam's shadow, nor a puppet of divine will. She was Lilith, independent and indomitable, a woman who traded paradise for freedom, comfort for autonomy. Her tale was a beacon of defiance, resonating through time and space, echoing in the hearts of those who dare to challenge the ordained order. This was her reward, the fruits of her ordeal. Independence, power and self-identity. While the narrative arc of many heroes sees them returning to their place of origin, transformed and enlightened, Lilith's journey took a different path. There was no return to the verdant fields of Eden for her. Instead, 
the wilderness remained her realm, the place where her power resonated, her spirit truly free. Yet, although physically bound to the wilderness, Lilith transcended its borders in a more profound way. As her dominion over the wilderness solidified, her influence seeped out of its confines, extending far beyond the untamed landscapes. Her legend grew, carried on the wings of the wind, whispered amidst the rustling leaves, and echoed in silent caves. Once known as the forsaken wife of Adam, the mother of demons, Lilith's image underwent a transformative shift. In a world where order was revered and obedience valued, Lilith stood as a compelling contradiction. Her story served as a reminder that order could be questioned, that obedience was not always virtue. Her refusal to submit, her a fight for equality, her endurance in the face of adversity, these facets of her journey painted her as a symbol of resistance against oppressive structures. Lilith's enduring legacy can be seen in her transformation from a cursed woman to a revered symbol of independent strength. Through the mists of time and legend, her tale of defiance continues to resonate, encouraging those who listen to question, to rebel, to strive for equality. It serves as a reminder that one can carve their own path, even against the currents of ordained order. For in every whisper of rebellion, in every cry for equality, echoes the spirit of Lilith, the first woman who dared to defy. From Lilith, we learn that adversity can be transformative, that defiance can be empowering, and that rebellion can lead to autonomy. We learn the power of resilience and the importance of carving our own path. This concludes our exploration of Lilith's story, a journey from Eden to the wilderness, from subjugation to power, an age-old tale that continues to inspire, to challenge, and to resonate. The tale of Lilith, the first woman who dared to defy. This story was written and narrated by me, James Deverell. Thank you for watching this video. Again, if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to hit the like button. And if you don't already, subscribe to my channel. I have just launched the podcast version of this YouTube channel on all major podcast platforms. So don't forget to head over to Spotify or Apple Podcasts and subscribe. Right now, the content down there is ad free, so you can take advantage of that. Don't forget to check out the content I'm releasing on other platforms, such as Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And finally, if you or anyone else you know has a story about anything related to high strangeness, please reach out to me with a brief description to stories at daredevil.com. Thanks again for watching.